In one tenth of a mile, enter the oh, roundabout S -type, and hello. take the fourth exit. <laughs> the S-Type flashed me. This is damning evidence of what I think we already know. That stayed blue. What? Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to my 1999 Jaguar. Now, if you saw my last video, unfortunately, you'll know that there's a few issues going on with this car at the moment. I've had some coolant problems, which I've been chasing with a local garage, um, but yet to no avail. However, there's been some developments and I think I, think I might have an idea of, of what's going on. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, before we do get into that, I just wanna clear up a few things from the last video. Number one being, lots of you commented, and rightly so, about the cat that was in shot when I was filming the car leaking coolant. Now that cat is my lovely cat called Lando, who you may have seen before. In fact, he was in my 24 hour challenge video in this car. He's absolutely fine, um, but I really appreciate all the comments regarding the coolant thing, because it's not something I'd actually considered. For those of you that haven't seen it, essentially he was quite close to the coolant. And obviously if cats ingest that, it is super, super bad um, i didn't honestly know quite the extent of it so thank you all for the comments you'll be pleased to know he's absolutely fine and in future i'll be making sure to clear up anything like that or make sure he's nowhere near the car when i'm testing things number two and although i'm not very pleased with the garage and i'll explain a little bit more at the moment i do want to defend them a little bit on the expansion tank part situation you saw on that invoice I showed, it was almost 200 quid for the expansion tank, which when they told me the quote, I was like, that's ridiculous. I'm going to look on eBay and find one myself. And then what I found out is that unfortunately, because this is a 1999 model, the expansion tank for a start is actually located in a different spot to the later ones. It's a really hard part to find. I did look around. I found some slightly cheaper options, but they didn't match the VIN number. So that's why it, well, the invoice was so big because of that part mainly. But unfortunately, that's all irrelevant really because as lots of you commented and being totally honest, I had a sneaky suspicion, but I have more reason to believe now that it is the case. Uh, I think we might have a head gasket issue with this car. I think the head gasket is slightly cracked or, or leaking. Now there's a few reasons for that. Um, number one being white exhaust smoke. There is quite a lot of it on startup as you'd expect. It's three, four degrees in the UK at the moment, but it does continue once the car's hot and when you stop, you, you can see it. And it's it's almost intermittent, which is a little bit strange because it's almost like every now and then some coolant is getting into the system, which would indicate a bit of a leak. Now, number two is that actually, since I made that last video, I did take the car back to the garage and they found the reason for the secondary leak and quite a, an abrupt one at that was a hose. It was a hose that had come loose from its clipping and it quite simply just needed to be put back on. Now it was in quite a, uh, not a very obvious place, so I wasn't able to see it, but they put that back together and it, it was initially fine after that. Now, whether they knocked that one doing the expansion tank or it was just bad luck that it happened pretty much straight after, I don't know, I'm not gonna point any fingers, but that did seem to sort things for a very little while until I've just been using the car a bit more and I've been noticing sort of every time I've driven it, there's just been a little bit less coolant in the expansion tank when I park up. And that would indicate to some sort of minor leak that's happening when the engine's running. And that would also be quite indicative of a head gasket leak or failure. And thirdly, I would actually quite like to hear from you guys if you know of any good and reputable Jaguar specialists, ideally in the Buckinghamshire area, because I don't really want to use that same garage again for obvious reasons. But anyway, thanks to you and all your suggestions, head gasket was something that came up. So today, instead of going back to another garage, I'm gonna see if I can try to identify and potentially rectify a head gasket issue from home myself. And so I did go ahead and take lots of your advice actually, and bought myself one of these, a block tester or sniff tester. Essentially, I think most of you will know what this is and I'm still learning, but it, it can sort of identify the exhaust gases that's coming into the coolant, which shouldn't be coming into the coolant, right? So if it does identify any of that, it will let you know about it and you'll know that there's a head gasket issue. And then I've gone and bought secondarily, uh, in case there is a head gasket issue, some of this steel seal. 
something I only found out about very recently, but it's essentially guaranteed to fix a head gasket crack or leak. And so if we do have a head gasket issue, we're gonna try and fix it with steel seals. So this is gonna be a very interesting video. I'm quite nervous actually, because I think we might have a head gasket leak. And at the same time, I would love that steel seal to fix it. So let's see. But the very first thing we need to do um, is get the car up to temperature so that we can do the sniff test. So instead of just idling it here, I'm just gonna run it around a block a little bit. I might as well just get some heat into the brakes and the gearbox and stuff as well. It's not going to do any more damage really doing a couple of miles up and down the road. So I'll take you with me for that. We'll come back. We'll do the sniff test, see what the conclusion from that is, whether we've got a head gasket problem or not. And I, in a way, I kind of hope I do so that it's sort of, we know then what's wrong with the car rather than chasing various different coolant leaks, whether it's thermostat or water pump or radiator. Could always be those things as well, of course. But I'm intrigued to see the result of that. So let's go for a little spin now. I'll take you with me and um, come back and do that sniff test. Get my seat back into position. Jaguar coming up on the screen now. I love it. And let's start the engine. Good girl. Let's make sure we've got that all switched off. Heated seats coming on. I'm going to put the heating on. It's very cold today. What is it? Five degrees Celsius. 26 degrees that will do put it on auto and oh i should probably finish this before i drive because otherwise that's going to go everywhere i'm going to turn the lights on manually because it's quite a dim day and i find with old cars generally i don't know if you find this too but the automatic lights which this car does have they're always very under sensitive i mean they don't come on automatically until it's literally pitch black whereas new cars they're basically on all the time and my new windscreen wipers. Lovely. Right, let's pop it in reverse. Get out of here. The only other minor indication of a head gasket problem is there is a sort of burning smell that comes through the air conditioning every now and then. I've changed the pollen filter. I've made sure to clear off any residue of oil or former coolant spills on the engine block itself. Yet there's just still a whiff of something burning. Um, when the car gets hot as well. So I think that could potentially be again some cool of getting into somewhere it's not meant to. Please follow the highlighted route. I shall, thank you. In two tenths of a mile, turn left. There's not a road there. I absolutely, <laughs> I love this old school navigation system. I don't know why, I just find them so funny. Take the next left turn, and then turn left ahead. There's literally no road, so I don't know how I'm going to do that. I mean, this is a 1999 car, so presumably the navigation data is from that year, if not before. So most of these roads that I'm driving around on apparently don't exist to the Jaguar. It makes it rather entertaining, but I just love... In one-tenth of a mile, enter the oh, roundabout S -type. Hello. take the fourth exit. <laughs> The S-Type flashed me. We're S-Type friends. Oh, that was so fun. As I was saying, I think the Jaguar lady's voice is so soothing. I think it's brilliant. Just give it a little bit of V8 power. Such a smooth engine, this. It's an absolute gorgeous engine. And so I hope we can save it from a potential premature death. I hope, I hope that's not the case. Okay, so what we're going to do after definitely not reading the instructions is we're gonna fill up this little thing here to the fluid level using this test fluid that comes with the kit. So we take this cap off at the top and you can see from the residue inside that I've definitely, definitely not had a practice before filming this. Pour it into the fluid level, which is about there. Let's get that cap back on. Then we're going to reattach this lid. Nice and securely on there. And then this little squeezy thing, we're going <laughs> to squeeze it thing up. It probably has a name. 
Yes, it's called the aspirator bulb. So we're gonna pop that into there with the metal part facing up. And then what we're gonna do is very carefully release the cap from the expansion tank over there and insert it. So let's just reposition and we'll do that. And insert the tester. And then slowly squeeze for a minute or so. And what should happen if the car's fine is the fluid should remain blue. But if it changes color, especially if it goes yellow, then that will indicate that there are exhaust gases going through into the coolant. Okay, it's not remained blue and it has turned a very, very faint tint of yellow, more greeny in fact. And I can still see white smoke coming out of the car, uh, out of the exhaust, even though it's been running for, well, best part of 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so now. That is very much yellowy. I'll come a bit closer to the camera so you can see. This is the test fluid. So obviously that seems like there is some sort of head gasket issue then. And so I'll switch the car off and we'll let it cool down for what, three or four hours or so. And we'll run that steel seal through it and see if we can fix something. The other thing though, is that just a minute ago, after I'd just done the sniff test, the radiator came flying on. The coolant was all the way up to the top of the expansion tank. It was on the minimum level and it just flew up. And then the radiator went off as the coolant then drew itself back in and all the way down to where it started. So I don't know if that's something to do with me actually doing the test itself, or if there's some other issue with like a radiator cap or a thermostat or, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a bit strange. Everything's okay in here. We've had no warnings. Temperatures all look fine. I'm gonna switch it off then. This would also be another red flag. Then we've got slightly milky oil from the cap there which obviously is indicative of water getting into the engine oil so not looking great i've also just noticed a little bit of coolant residue there so i have no idea where that has come from to be honest i have no idea a little bit odd but anyway yeah this is damning evidence of what i think we already know so let's see if this steel seal is going to be our saving grace today. Okay, well, hours have passed. The sun has started to go down and it's time to try out the steel seal. Let's see if this works. Now, the instructions for this are rather simple and are included literally on the back of the bottle. And basically all we're gonna to have to do is pour the steel seal into the expansion tank. Now. There's a few things to say. Uh, one, it does recommend that you flush the entire coolant system in order to get better results. Um, but you can put it in with antifreeze or coolant as long as it's not mixed in with any other chemicals. And to the best of my knowledge, the coolant that's in my tank is just that. The reason I'm not flushing the coolant out, which I would happily do, is because I just don't have the knowledge to do that. Um, I wish I had a friend or someone close by that could come and help. Also, I think it would involve jacking the car up to a certain extent and I don't actually have my trolley jack. So in an ideal world, obviously I would want to do that, but I just, I'm just not quite there with the mechanical knowledge and I don't want to risk anything. So I'm just gonna add it to what's already in the tank. Now the coolant level is quite low, so that should help. And then yeah, we've just gotta run up the car for around 30 or 40 minutes. And then we'll repeat the sniff test to see if we get yellow again or if it remains blue, which is hopefully what will happen. The other thing as well is that Steel Seal says that you should have uh, a bottle for every two and a half liters of displacement. Obviously this car's four litres, but I've only got one bottle. Now that's pretty much because of the price of it. It's about 40 quid a bottle. I think I paid 35. So it's quite expensive. And I don't know, maybe I should have bought two. Maybe I should be flushing the coolant, but I just want to try something that I'm comfortable with. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, so if you're screaming at me in the comments because I'm doing something terribly wrong, um, then I do apologise, but I'm trying my best. Obviously, depending on the result of this little experiment, I think the car's gonna probably have to go back to a workshop. And so I would love to hear from, from you guys again on any reputable Jag places you know, or if any of you even want to try and help me out or have a ramp that I can use, 
I'd love to hear from you. So do comment below. Anyway, let's try out this then. There it is. So now what we need to do according to the instruction is turn the heater and fan to maximum, high, and turn the engine on. And then once the vehicle reaches operating temperature, we're gonna idle for 30 further minutes. So basically I'm gonna leave the car running for about 35, 40 minutes or so. And then what we'll do is run the sniff test at the end of that 35 minutes whilst the coolant's still hot to see if we've, well, got rid of the issue. Okay, well the bad news is the car has been running for almost half an hour now since I put in the steel seal and still got lots of white smoke coming out of it. So initially, I'm assuming this is not working. I think I am a bit frustrated now because, put it this way, I have some pretty big plans with this car and I keep having to push them back which is really frustrating. And of course, I knew there would be teething issues with the Jag, but to have something that might potentially be fatal and certainly would make the car pretty undrivable until it's rectified, well, I'm just a bit disappointed. And I can keep seeing white clouds of smoke coming up from the exhaust in my wing mirrors, and it's just, it hurts every time I see it. While we're sat here though, I might as well prepare the testing kit for another test in here so let's do that now get our blue test liquid pour it up to the fluid level line out there then secure the lid and the aspirator bowl our favorite piece the car has been running a long time now. It's 10 past four. It's dark. My lovely Christmas lights have come on. And so it's probably time to uh, run the test. And unfortunately, I can still see white smoke coming up from behind the car. It's not doing it right now. I mean, it is intermittent, which is a bit strange, but it is still doing it. So anyway, I'm not optimistic about this test. I'm guessing it's just gonna come through with the same result as earlier, but let's try anyway. And I'm not gonna lie, that stayed blue. That's still blue. Okay, so I'm now very confused because the test I've just done has come back negative for head gasket because that fluid is still blue. I'm looking at it at different angles. Let me see if I can get a torch on it so it's a bit easier for you guys to see. Can you see that? There you go, it's blue. I'm confused, honestly, to say the least. Um, I've still got a bit of white smoke puffing every now and then out the back of the car. So there clearly is some sort of water getting into the exhaust gases. So I don't know, I guess I'm looking for your advice now because I really don't know what uh, what's going on. So let's just recap, mainly for my head. The car's been in for a misfire and a coolant leak. The expansion tank they discovered was cracked, as suspected, and so they replaced that. Then I took the car back in because there was another major coolant leak, and in that they reattached a, I believe a rubber hose, 
um, somewhere where it had come off behind the near side driver's headlight is what I was told. And then I suspected a head gasket, so we ran the car up to temperature, we did a sniff test, it came back positive for head gasket as the fluid went from blue to a yellowy colour. Now we've ran steel seal through the system and although I'm still seeing exhaust gases, I ran the sniff test after about 40 minutes of the car running and it came back negative with a still blue liquid in the test tube. And so I'd be happy, but for me I'm just not sure about the white exhaust smoke, why we're still getting that. I would really love your suggestions and advice on where to go from here because like I say, I've got some pretty big plans with this car, one of which is meant to be next week and involves oh, probably a good seven or 800 miles of driving. And should I be doing that or should I not? So I really, really ask for your advice on what you think I should be checking next with this car. Should I be checking the thermostat, the radiator, something entirely different? Why am I still getting smoke coming out the exhaust? And also, if you know of anywhere that I should take this Jag, somewhere or someone that knows these early V8S types well, I would really appreciate uh, being pointed in the right direction by you guys. Now you'll probably see from my face, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say upset, but I feel a bit downtrodden by this whole thing because I just want to use this car and I want to show you how great it is. I don't just want to be filming videos on my driveway trying to, uh, work out what's wrong with it like some idiot but nonetheless I hope you appreciate these videos I hope you're enjoying them that's the main thing I really hope you enjoy these videos do let me know if you do thanks so much for watching this one and I'll see you all very very soon